Hello, I'm Michelle. Welcome to my channel. I'm glad to have you join me today for some sewing. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do the gathering stitch. And then I'm going to be sharing a video of me hand stitching an entire skirt from four and a half yards of fabric. If you'd like to make one yourself, I got the pattern from Charm Patterns and it's one of the free patterns on there. I have a link in my description, but it's a draft it yourself. It's very simple. It only requires a little bit of math. And just so you know, I don't strictly follow the instructions because I chose to have a zipper and hooks and bars instead of buttons because that's what I had on hand. All the pieces of the pattern are the same and I used a yellow quilting cotton from my stash to make the skirt. Here is how you do the gathering stitch. This stitch is also sometimes called the straight stitch and is also interchangeable with the basting stitch or running stitch. They all use the same technique and you just have to adjust the length of your stitch and whether or not you're going to use a single or double thread for your project. For the basting stitch, I thread my needle and I leave a double thread. I make a knot at the end so it doesn't pull through my fabric before I choose to remove it. This is a simple stitch. You just weave your needle back and forth through your fabric. The stitches can be any size of your choosing. For gathering a skirt, I use half an inch to three quarters of an inch. If I'm doing basting, I use about a quarter of an inch to half an inch, depending on how tightly I want the two pieces held together. A basting stitch is generally only used for a temporary hold to keep two pieces of fabric together until you put in a more permanent stitch. It does not need a knot at the end. It can also be used to hold a zipper straight before you use a zipper foot on your sewing machine to make your seam straighter than if you used pins to hold it in place. If you are using this stitch for gathering, once you have finished running the stitch down the length of your fabric, you will slide the fabric back to create gathers. You will then fit it to whatever edge it needs to be attached. Generally, this is for skirts at the waistline and you would make it compress to the length of your waistband. First, I took four and a half yards of fabric and stretched it out across my floor. Then I marked nine inches from the edge of the fabric and cut that. I will use that to make my pocket pieces. Next, I marked four and a quarter inches all the way down the same edge and cut that off too. This will be used for my waistband. I then measured up 11 and 3 eighths an inch all the way down the length of my fabric. And then I had to show you Zoe. Once I cut this off, it left a piece that measured 33 and 5 eighths inch wide and just over four yards long. This will be the body of my skirt. Cut the excess off my waistband and cut my pockets to size measuring nine by eight inches. Next, I attached some woven stay tape around the edges of both pockets. Don't worry about the seam allowance that I marked on there. I realized later that it didn't matter. Make sure to have the rough side against your fabric. I made the mistake of having one piece upside down and it stuck to my pressing cloth instead of the pocket. You're going to cut four pieces of each length, nine inches and eight inches. and then take it to your ironing board and press. Be sure to use a cloth so that you don't burn the stay tape to your iron. Then I did a double fold for my seam allowance and pressed all the edges of the pockets. You will also need fusible interlining for your waistband. I did not have enough so I pieced mine together. This works fine as long as the pieced edges aren't on the sections that will get pulled on. It also works best if you can overlap the fusible pieces slightly to fuse them together. Thank you. 
I put the smaller pieces in the back middle of the waistband and the longer pieces on the edges. Then I press them making sure the rough side is facing your waistband. Next, I folded the waistband in half and pressed. Then I also pressed the hem allowance on all sides of the waistband. Next, I stitched the seam allowance on my pockets down on the top edge only of each pocket by using a blind hem stitch. Following that, I folded in the facing by folding one and a half inches twice and then pressing it. I then stitched down my facings on both ends of the skirt. I used the back stitch to stitch facings down and made sure to have neat stitches on the outside as a top stitch. I remembered after this that I might have been beneficial to put in some interfacing before I stitched this, however I didn't have any left so I skipped that. Next, I folded up the hem two inches twice and then pressed it. Then I used a blind hem stitch to sew the hem in place. Following that, I measured where I wanted my pockets and stitched them in place. I used the back stitch once again to give a nice top stitch to the three edges that are stitched down. Gathering is next. I evenly marked my fabric into four sections with disappearing markers. I used the gathering stitch that I showed you earlier in the video to do my gathering. I spaced my stitches about three quarters of an inch apart all the way across the top of what the skirt will be. Once I finished gathering the top of the skirt, I marked the waistband into four even sections. I then lined those marks up with the marks on the skirt, and then attempted to evenly spread the fabric between the marks making the gathering even. I then pinned the gathers to the seam allowance on the front of the waistband. Next I used a back stitch to attach the waistband to the skirt, making sure to stay within the seam allowance. I then used a back stitch again on the outside to give the skirt a nice top stitch on the waistband.
and I finished the waistband on the back by using the blind hem stitch. I really should have attached the zipper before attaching the waistband, but at this point I hadn't decided to use the zipper yet. Next I attached my hooks and bars. If you want me to show you how to do this on a future video, please let me know. First I marked where I wanted them and then I stitched them on. Lastly, I pinned my zipper in place making sure to have proper overlap on my skirt facing so the zipper wouldn't show. After I was sure it was exactly where I wanted it, I stitched it in place. I used the back stitch once again, but I was careful not to go all the way through the fabric so that the stitches wouldn't show on the outside of the skirt. I sewed first a quarter of an inch from the zip and then I stitched down the loose edge in the same manner. This way the zipper lays flat. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video. I have just a few notes about my skirt. Um, the next time if I make it again, I will be sewing the zipper on before I sew it to the waistband. That way it makes sure that the zipper ends are secure at the top. Also, I do wish the pockets were a little bit higher, so maybe just a couple of inches. Um, but other than that, I'm very happy with this skirt. It's functional, it's comfortable, it's cute. Um, so I'll still be wearing it, even though I have a few things I need to fix. Next week, I plan on doing a video on how to read our sewing patterns. And after that, I'll be moving on to using the sewing machine. Thank you again so much for watching my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can see my future videos. And if you would like to, you can support me over on Ko-Fi. The link is in my description, or you can scan the QR code at the end screen of my video. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.